Guys, here's something you really need to know about me. If I say I'm going to do something weekly, that means I really don't have time and I have no idea when I'm going to post them. So you might get two in a week, like now, or you might get... I don't know. So this is FAQs from all of you's part... twos. <laughs> I had this elaborate plan where for every question I was asked, I would say the user that asked me it, but uh, just got too many. So unfortunately, you're just going to have to enjoy that warm, fuzzy feeling knowing that it was you instead of me shouting you out. And I was asked this first question a bazillion times anyway, who should be the next captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs? And this, of course, is assuming uh, Matson will come back. Staging gets rumored a lot. Steen gets rumored a lot. McCabe has even been rumored. I act, I've even heard Jamal Mayers, believe it or not. But who do I want to be the next captain? Nobody. Or everybody. This guy doesn't even make sense, man. He's crazy. I'm serious. I hope the Leafs either have an alternating captain like the Sabres did last year, which I think was kind of a good idea, actually, or just have three assistants and... Sorry! The discussion of having a new captain on any team should go something like this. Johnson, we need a new captain. Well, sir, this guy, this guy, and this guy are all very good candidates. Good, we'll pick from them, then. This is how the Leafs selection is going. We need a new captain. Who should it be? Uh, I guess it could be this guy. So what's the point? When the Leafs have a captain guy, make him the captain. And until then, whatever. Lots of teams have done it. It's not like you can't play anymore. I'll even be the new captain. Sorry, dude. Where would we buy a jersey that fits? Question number two was Ray Emery treated fairly. Dominic Morso didn't treat him fairly when he... Mm, is it a dang old goal? But that's not what I'm talking about. Here's the one thing everyone needs to know about the Ray Emery saga in Ottawa. We don't know everything. Because I refuse to believe that a backup goaltender sitting on the bench can make his team so bad after they were so good. And now he's in Russia where I'm sure they'll treat him very fairly. I wrote a blog a long time ago, kind of before the saga started, right at the beginning, where I said how I thought Ottawa really treated Ray Emery poorly. A lot of people forget he started his career with 9 or 10 straight wins, and whenever the starting goaltender in front of him faltered, whether it be... Laleem, Hashik, or what have you. He was right there. Gerber, anyone? He did better than a lot of people expected him to, put up great starting goaltender numbers, and they went out and got Martin Gerber anyway. Now, of course, the Gerber thing doesn't look so bad right now. I still think he was Ottawa's best player during the playoffs. We all know Emery's attitude was bad at times. He even admitted that. But I just think if Ottawa had named him the undisputed number one a couple of years ago, this situation might not be happening. What? No, Steve, that makes too much sense. Three million dollar backup. To go on a little side note, I heard the Leafs were going to go out and get Gerber when he was a free agent, and I was like, no, 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 please, no! Then Ottawa got him, and I was like, yes! So was he treated fairly? Perhaps yes, perhaps no. But I truly believe if he has a good season out in Russia this year, he'll be back in the NHL someday. Who is most likely to win the Pacific Division? Interesting question. For me, it's between the Dallas Stars and the San Jose Sharks. And there's too many variables to give a definitive answer, but off the top of my head, let's go with Dallas. Gotta take into account that San Jose has one of the best playmakers of this generation, one of the best goalies of today, and one of the best youth cores of today. But they're going to be missing their leading hitter in Steve Bernier, and they also have a new coach. Oh, and uh, Rob Blake. Dallas has an interesting mixture of youth and age, and also, they got Fabian Brunstrom, and who knows how he's going to do. Also got a full season with Brad Richards, and of course, they now have Sean Avery locked up. Huh? 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 Interesting thing, look up clips of the players that were interviewed after Sean Avery did the stick thing on Brodeur. Joe Thornton said he loved it. But yes, Sean Avery is an X-factor in any game, and, you know, I, I just feel like Dallas has got it. But predictions are just predictions, and I guess we'll see in the spring. What's with the Leafs getting all these enforcers? That's it! Put up your new food! I wouldn't say they're getting enforcers. I think they might have gotten an enforcer in Ryan Hulwig. Everyone else they've acquired seems to either be the pesky or grinder sort of big guy type. Hagman's one of those just pesky little guys, and Mayers has some size to him. Finger, he's been known to drop the mitts, and he's pretty tough. Uh, are, you, are you saying the Leafs didn't need toughness? Think of some of the things that have happened to the Leafs in recent memory. Steve Downey punching Jason Blake, no one sticking up for Thomas Caberle in the New Jersey game, and Matt Staging fighting. This needs to stop! They both have limited hockey skill, 
but one is just this big kind of bulky enforcer guy, and another is a pesky little guy that you can expect to annoy the other team. I'd rather take him. If the Leafs were to get Ivanins, his sole job would be to get his face pounded in by George the Rock every time we play the Habs. So here's what we know about the Leafs next year. They got a solid goalie, they got a coach who is all about defense, and they got a bunch of big, kind of grindy, pesky guys. I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, I'm not saying they're even going to get close, but you will have to work to beat the Leafs next season. And if the score gets out of hand, and it might. Last question for this video, how's life changed since the videos have started and do you feel pressure to always make them enjoyable? Sometimes I'll write a vague outline of what I want to talk about in the video, especially uh, during the season when I gotta get specifics on the game, but for the most part I sit down in front of the camera and you know as much as I do. I'll be like, uh, I need something funny. Oh look, camel, right here, there you go, what up, camel. And videos that have a lot of the figurines in them, I mean I don't have to go very far, look, look. Hi, hi figurines, look at them all, look at them all, look at them all. Matt's, hi. But, people like them, and as long as you like them, I'll keep doing them. How's life changed? Not much, to be honest. To date, these videos have generated zero dollars, so uh, if you meant that way, um, no. I've been noticed in public a couple times, which was really weird. And I've gotten emails from like some cool people I never really expected to talk to. But in the end, what I'm doing isn't really anything special. I'm just doing what you do with the rest of your friends that you talk about hockey with. Except I'm crazy! I <laughs> hold <My whole> camel! <laughs> Crazy, man. Like, did you see the jacket I was wearing in that Don Cherry video? So anyway, that's it for FAQs from all of yous for this week. Next week ought to be a good one. I'm going to talk about whether or not Luke Shen will be in the Leafs lineup next year. And what is a better rivalry, Toronto versus Montreal or Toronto versus Ottawa? That should be a good one.